Hey everybody, Rudy here from Take A Bath Productions with another video helping you fix various things. In this video, I'll be showing you how to set up this Philips 8 device remote control for use on different devices. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Okay, first a word about batteries. Make sure that your batteries are good. I've seen lots of remotes that won't program correctly and the only thing wrong is the batteries aren't fresh. Uh, so with that being said, the remote takes two batteries and they go right underneath this cover right here. Two AA batteries right there. Okay, the remote also has a nice battery saver feature. Say if the remote gets stuck between the cushions and any of the buttons get pressed, it'll run about eight seconds and then shut off. There it goes. Okay, so that's nice. And one other thing, if you need to replace the batteries after the remote has been programmed, you can take out the old batteries and the codes will stay in the memory for up to 10 minutes while you're changing out the batteries. Just wanted to make a quick word about the buttons. Most of these buttons are self-explanatory, but there are a couple that uh, aren't. And that's uh, these stream buttons right here. These are hotkeys to access apps like Netflix, Amazon Prime, etc. Uh, these are not programmable and will only work on some devices. Um, I have one smart TV and the only one that I could get to work was this one. And uh, that brought up the Netflix app, so maybe on a newer smart TV they have more features and some of these will work on that. Um, but the instruction book doesn't say a word about these except for the fact that they're hot, key hot keys and that's it. Uh, so that was kind of disappointing on that. Um, so you'll have to play around with them once you get them set up and see if they do anything on your device. And uh, second are these ABCD buttons, the colored ones right here. Uh, they are for accessing additional features for DVRs and cable and satellite receivers. Okay, so let's get into the meat and potatoes part of the video, the programming. Okay, so there are two methods of programming the remote, uh, the direct code entry and the auto code search. Uh, we're going to start off with the direct code entry. This is usually the simplest and quickest method. Um, a real quick note, uh, the remote comes pre-programmed from the factory for a Roku streaming device and a Samsung TV. You're going to push uh, STR here for Roku and of course uh, TV for the Samsung TV. That's right out of the box. Um, if you're going to use it with a Roku, the factory Roku remote is an RF remote and it'll work behind a TV or something if you want to hide the Roku box, but this remote is infrared only and it's not going to work if the device is behind the TV or hidden in any way. It has to have line of sight uh, because it's infrared. So keep that in mind. Okay, so in this example, I'll be programming the remote to a Vizio TV, an Apple TV, and a Bose soundbar. Uh, by the way, you can use any of these device buttons to program any other device. Uh, for example, if you wanted to use the remote for two TVs, you could put the main TV under TV and you could put the second TV under auxiliary. It doesn't have to go under auxiliary. It could go under anything else is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so to program the TV, press and hold the setup button till the power light goes red. Press the device button and my code for Vizio 5631. Power light went out. And by the way, this goes for any of the devices that you're going to program. If you get a code that only works partially, uh, some features work and not others, like you have power but no input or no volume or something like that, you know, all the features aren't working to your expectation, try some different codes. If you look at the manual, sometimes there are several codes listed for each uh, brand of category, say Samsung has five or six codes, Sony has five or six, whatever. If the first one doesn't work, go on down the list until you find one that works everything. Uh, nine times out of ten, the first one is going to work, but uh, sometimes they don't. And by the way, I'll uh, post a link to the codes. Uh, that way you can consult that if you, uh, if you want to look there too. All right, pushing the power. See the Vizio light turn white. 
Okay, TV came on, we got volume up, volume down, input, mute. Mute and power. Yep, working just fine. Okay, now for the Apple TV, I'm going to use the uh, STR button right here. Uh, but as stated earlier, I could put it anywhere. So, same thing as always push the setup button until the power light comes on. I'm pushing STR, then my code 1093. Power light went out. Now let's do the Bose soundbar. Set up again. AUD for audio. And Bose is 0466. Okay, that's how you do a direct code entry. Um, I'm not going to cover eight devices because you get the idea. Uh, it's just the same thing uh, with different device buttons. The auto code search is where you can search throughout all the codes stored in the remote to find a code for your device. Now this could take a while if your device happens to be close to the end of the code list, uh, so patience could be a factor. Okay, so manually turn on the device that you want to try to control and press and hold the setup button until the power light glows red. And then press and release the device button that you want to program to and then press the power button. Okay, what this does is it sends out 10 codes at a time, and if it was none of those codes, you try another 10, and if it was none of those, you try another 10, and you keep going after you've gone through 25,000 codes, it's going to be the last one. Um, so we're just going to use a hypothetical scenario that mine was 25 codes, okay? So that was 20 codes that I just sent out. I'm going to hit it again. Uh, up, the TV just turned off, hypothetically, of course. And uh, so it was one of those 10 codes that I just sent out. Okay, so that's, it was the 25th code. So what you're going to do is press the volume up button. There's 21, 22, 23, 24, nothing happened. 25, oh, it, it cut off. Uh, so after you've done that, hit the TV button to store the code. Now if you pass your code by accident, just hit the volume down button in this case and... Um, it'll go back to the previous code and then if it shuts off then that was your code and then hit the device button. Next I'm going to show you how to do the primary audio control. Uh, this allows you to select a single device that the volume buttons will always control. Uh, so in my case if I want to run the Bose soundbar all the time and I don't want the volume buttons to affect the TV. Uh, to enable this feature press the setup button once again Press the device button that you want to control the volume all the time. And press and release the mute button here. And then press the volume button up. There we go. The power light blinked on and off. And now when I push the volume button, of course, the, uh, the audio is going to be the one that's going to control the audio all the time. And it won't affect the TV volume. Uh, say if you tried this feature and you don't like it, to disable it, go back to normal. Go back there, press the audio button again, mute, volume down. All right, that's about it, guys. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you, click on that like button and subscribe to my channel. I come out with videos like this as often as I can. Thanks for watching.